So I've been going through the basement of the old Willys and coming up with stuff. And um, I have this, which is an old copy of uh, a vintage guitar with uh, Nancy Wilson playing. And don't blind, these look cool. But this is the old uh, vintage guitar. This is the 1980 Flying V. The ones with that are made of mahogany and that are natural finish uh, from 1980, there's about a hundred of them, 120, something like that. These are really rare. We'll get to that later. But just before, wait, I dropped my prop. This is the new vintage guitar in its new smaller format. And this is this month's vintage guitar. So for years now, I've been saying this is the last video we're doing from the store. This is the last video, but I'm going to present you with the really, really, really last video we did at the store. And that's playing this. This is a 1959 Sunburst Les Paul that used to belong to Joe Walsh. And he owned it. He bought it about 1975, wrote a bunch of stuff on it. And um, then just the other day, bought it back. So Vintage Guitar Magazine, which is a great magazine for all of us, both online and in print. And uh, the, the Vintage Car, this is the burst that he is playing. And I'm now going to play you the video of that. And Joe, who was a super cool guy, I, I got to call it Ring Ring. It's Joe Walsh on my phone. And uh, he had said, I want it, I don't want it. And he was kind of hemming and hawing a little bit. And then he finally called me up and said, man, I want it. I want it for sure. And so um, here I am at the store playing that burst, goofing around. I've never seen this video. I just made the print and gave it over to these guys. And now I'm going to show you that this is me screwing around with this 59 burst. And you know, they're worth as much as a house here in Minneapolis. So it was, it's, it's a real privilege to play vintage guitars like this, especially vintage guitars like Joe Walsh's burst that he owned from 75 to like 83 which Hotel California was in that time frame his live record you can't argue with the sick mind and here is me screwing around it's a great uh, it's a great uh, thing to have when you have a job like this okay all right you guys watch this hi this is here I am late at night in the old Willies we're looking forward to moving to the new Willys, and this will be one of the last times I do anything in this place. And, and we might miss this place, but honestly, uh, with the rents up and the noise next door, we're kind of excited about having our own building. There's a 30-car parking spot there. Uh, we still will be appointment only, and that has worked for us. And we've had some people mad at us because of that, but our business has gone up tremendously with appointment only because we can spend time with people that are buying outside of the state and we can spend better time with people that want to sit down and try a few things instead of tripping over people or having other people just talk at them for whatever reason that might be. So I'm going to do something special here for one of our last videos. Maybe it'll be our last video. I don't know. Maybe we'll save this. This is a 1959 Les Paul. And I've shown this once or twice before, but um, for bursts, there is, generally speaking, late 58, because early 58 were gold tops and late 58 were bursts, big frets help those came by late 58 and uh 59 all the 59s are considered a burst any 59 is generally considered a burst there is 649 les paul standards made uh and that's it and the shipping totals show them combined les paul standards and les paul standard bigsby we don't know how many are bigsby let's say a third of them so that leaves about 450. And then let's say half of those are broken or modified in some way. I know one guy that took his 59 burst and chopped that off. Because frankly, back in 1967, as an eight-year-old guitar, not many people cared. It wasn't until about 68 that these really became a big deal. Mike Bloomfield, who is a huge influence, an American blues player, uh, influenced guys like Eric Clapton. And then, of course, the famous Eric Clapton Beano record in 1966 
uh, came out and he was playing a burst through a Marshall and that really did it. This guitar in particular with its double white PAFs and, and basically nobody really understood the double whites until much into the 70s. Um, this used to belong to Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh is a customer. We contacted Joe Walsh. Hey, Joe, do you want, remember this? Actually, he contacted us and said, I don't know if that's my guitar. And we showed him pictures and he goes, oh yeah, that's my guitar. And um, Joe Walsh confirmed that he owned this and he owned this about 1975. He recorded his last record for ABC Records, uh, which was a live record. You can't argue with a sick mind. And then just a few short months later, went on to record the Eagles Hotel California and there's a ton of great guitar work in there. This is a 1959, considered a relatively plain top. Um, they do get really flamey. It's also faded. It's been played out on stage. And so it just has that look. There's something about these 59s. They're, they've got a bit of a spine back here. It's almost hidden into the wood and it flattens out. The neck gets a little smaller here as you're reaching for the strings, of course, but there's a bit of a V. I have never seen a reissue that came close to carving that slight V and then tapering out. It's not quite the V. I had Jimmy Page's Black Les Paul Custom in my hands for a while and it had that feature too. This slight V that tapered off into a non-V by the time you hit the uh, 12th fret. So um, this one is unbroken. It's uh, a 1959 and these are famous. The white PAFs are famous for uh, having a little crisper and more teeth. I'm playing through my Clubman, uh, an old Mark Sampson era Clubman 35. Let's see, what's a Joe Walsh thing? are what bursts are. I played Gibsons as a kid and frankly I'm really more of a, uh, a Gretsch guy, a Telly guy, a P90 guy but It's all about the old wood. In this case, it's all about the old wood, the magnets, who played it for 40 years, and uh, all the other stuff. But this is a rare thing to even see one of these 600, maybe down to 300 original non-broken bursts. Most of these were tools. Guys bought this because they wanted to play. Not many guys bought this back in 1959 to play crunchy music. Why? Well, there wasn't a master volume really until the mid 70s. No master volumes until the mid 70s. So there was old blues guys that would turn their amps to 10. And there was guys that loved that sound and then turned their amps to 10. Like Hendrix in the 60s, he would just dime his amp to get that flooded out. 
sound. So these guitars, new, were really bought by guys that didn't want feedback. They're playing more, I don't know, rhythm and blues, country music, but um, they're kind of heavy for me. I've sold, I've owned a lot of bursts personally, played them as a kid, and uh, I ended up selling them because there was too much money that I, okay, you want it? That's great. And uh, I probably sold my burst, my first burst for 3,500 bucks. That was a lot of money. That's all I got for now. Uh, saying goodbye from Willie's American Guitars from the old store. Out with the old, in with the new. Our last video, which I'm showing off this burst, which used to belong to Joe Walsh uh, of the Eagles. And um, uh, that's all I got for you right now. And I'm going to go bring this back home. See ya.